Jennifer and welcome back to my channel, the CRPS Network. Today I'm going to be talking about the DRG stimulator or the dorsal root ganglion stimulator and how this differs from the spinal cord stimulator. The DRG or dorsal root ganglion is a bundle of neurons that sits just outside of the spinal column in your lower back. It was once thought that the DRG had no involvement with neuropathic pain. However, there's new evidence that supports that the DRG is responsible for the hyperexcitability of the central nervous system. We know that with CRPS, getting the central nervous system into a calm state is what we're trying to achieve to avoid um, unwanted pain. So, um, in 2016, the FDA approved the DRG stimulator as a treatment for CRPS. So a DRG stimulator is very similar, similar to a spinal cord stimulator. I made a whole video about the spinal cord stimulator. So if you're interested in seeing that, I'll leave a link right here above so you can check that out and that will give you a little bit more information about the stimulators in general. Okay, there are three components to the DRG stimulator, just like the spinal cord stimulator. They are one, you're gonna have a pack that is implanted in you, and this is what's responsible for sending out the uh, pulses. Uh, then you'll also have lead wires that attach to the DRG or the dorsal gang root ganglion, and you'll also have a handheld control. This can turn on and off, the stimulator as well as some can adjust the intensity of it. So I'd like to discuss some of the uh, differences and similarities between the DRG stimulator and a traditional spinal cord stimulator. Spinal cord stimulators have been around a long time and the DRG is kind of just a a newer improved version since they found that the dorsal root ganglion um, is responsible for the hyperexcitability or thought to be responsible for the hyperexcitability of the central nervous system. The difference between the SCS and the DRG stimulators, the this DRG stimulator, the leads are placed over the DRG instead of the spinal cord. So uh, that's really the main difference between the two are where the leads are placed. And there's a few other things that make the DRG a more attractive option. For one, it uses lower energy. This means that the battery inside the device will last longer. It, it can last up to 10 times longer than a traditional spinal cord stimulator battery. Also, there is better lead migration. What this means is in traditional spinal cord stimulators, about 14% of the time, the lead wires become disconnected or broken. They migrate and move. And with the DRG stimulator, this is gotten down to about only 1% of the time this happens. Okay, also with the DRG, um, positional changes don't affect the intensity of the stimulation you're getting like the spinal cord stimulator. The spinal cord stimulator, uh, different positions, maybe you're laying down or sitting up, will have different effects on the intensity of the vibrations you're feeling. However, with the DRG stimulator, they've kind of worked out those kinks and it really doesn't matter what position you're in, you're going to get a constant um, messages, signals coming through. A last uh, difference between the two is just that it's able to target painful areas better. Before with the spinal cord stimulator, it was able to target the painful areas around 61% of the time. However, with the DRG stimulator, it's able to accurately pinpoint your pain areas 94% of the time. Okay, there are a couple studies that have been done about the DRG. One study 
looked at people that had had implants approximately three months after, and 70% of the people got 80% relief. And another study versus the spinal cord stimulator only 50, approximately 50% 50 people get relief from the spinal cord stimulator. Okay, and another study that was done in the Netherlands with 56 people that had had a spinal cord, I'm sorry, had had a DRG stimulator implanted and they reported after uh, 12 months of having the DRG that their pain levels decreased from about an 8.1 down to a four. So this is great, cutting your pain in half uh, is definitely very promising. Okay, also within this study in the Netherlands, it was reported that with the 56 people, most of the people's function had improved with the DRG stimulator. Okay, I'd like to also talk about some of the risks involved with the DRG stimulator. Um, of course, there's always a risk with any surgeries when CRPS of having spreading of pain to the surgical area. So you may have um, more CRPS type pain in the area of the surgery or in maybe another area of your body, but any surgery can put you at risk for um, spreading. If you're concerned about something like that, make sure to watch my video preparing for surgery with CRPS. I'll leave a link up here for you. Also, another risk is broken leads or migrating leads. But like I mentioned, the DRG is only 1% of the time they're seeing migrating leads versus 14% with a spinal cord stimulator. So that has definitely improved that risk. Um, some of the other risks involve um, a failed um, procedure. Maybe it just is not relieving your pain. Also failed hardware. We know sometimes just machinery breaks down from time to time. That is completely possible, although rare. And um, also rare, but is a, a possible risk as paralysis. Also, if you've had a DRG stimulator, make sure to let us know in the comments section below if it's helped you with your pain levels and function, and if you've had any negative side effects or risks from having the procedure. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please make sure to give it a thumbs up so other people like you can find it. I make new videos every week, so hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of when I make the next one. Till next time, take care.